good afternoon friends today in this lecture we will discuss about the geospatial technology its fundamentals and uh, with relevance to the urban and regional planning and some applications now let me begin with urban areas in india as we all know as per the census results that uh, urban areas are ever increasing in the year 2001 the urban population was 27.81% in the year 2011 census now the urban population has increased to 31.16% we all know ever uh, urban areas as it is increasing it is uh, assumed that that urban areas urban population will now constitute close to 40 or more than 40% in the year 2030 though the urban areas have a large say contribution in the gdp so this cannot be ignored in that context urban and regional planning has got relevance now when you look at the decadal variation in urban population over the years when you look at this chart where the urban population rural population and the total population is depicted you see urban population in general is increasing now it says only there are some nick points are there for example in the year uh, 1950 or the year 1970 as a whole urban population has been increasing and at some nick point for example in the year 1920 the total population there was a decrease because of some reason because of the there were some diseases which have occurred or a rural urban population has decreased because of some reasons in the year following the partition now as we all know 337 million persons live in urban areas that is 31.16 of total population and the as we have discussed just now the level of urbanization has increased from 27.81% as per the 2011 census now uh, the seven is um, that is the 2001 census and now it has increased to 31.16% as per the 2011 census now the seven states and the unit territories have got the higher urban population and they are in city delhi chandigarh lakshadweep daman diu puducherry goa and mizoram and city delhi has got the, got the highest proportion of urban population that is 97.5% in terms of absolute number the maharashtra has got the highest and the sikkim has got the lowest urban population now when you look at uh, these all characteristics let us define what are urban areas urban areas are characterized by higher population density and infrastructure in comparison to areas surrounding it it may be cities towns and conurbations excluding the rural settlement for example villages and hamlets so as such any urban area should satisfy three criteria a minimum population of 5000 at least 75% of male has uh, uh, working population engaged in non agricultural pursuits and the density of population of at least 400 persons per square kilometer having understood the urban uh, definition the urban areas are defined in four categories there may be stat statutory towns census towns urban agglomerations or outgrowths statutory towns are the all places where were the municipality corporation cantonment board notified area town committee etc they are in existence census towns are those towns where the such nomenclature is not in practice and where the minimum population of 5075 as seen in the previous slide and the 75% of main population is engaged in non agricultural pursuits and at density of at least 400 persons per square kilometer there are two more definitions here the urban agglomerations which com constitutes urban spread con uh, comprising one or more towns or the adjoining outgrowth some examples so they are all areas for example the uh, be beyond the mumbai urban area some uh, urban agglomerations similarly some outgrowth they are the uh, areas around the core city or towns such as a well recognized place for example railway colony university campus port area which are lying outside the limit of the town now in the purpose of let us have a look on the purpose of urban planning total urban planning has got the mandate of 
well balanced social and economic development improvement of life of quality of life responsible administration of resources and environment protection rational use of land the urban planning spreads over varying discipline it's a multidisciplinary aspect where we look into the physical social cultural economic political ecological aspects it may be the um, uh, built environment man's interrelationship behavior or the financial and other characteristics in the urban area now urban we cannot ignore as i told in the beginning of my presentation we cannot today ignore the importance of urban planning when as of now 63% of the gdp is coming from the urban areas in india now the urban areas are the engines of growth provide services and economics of scale they contribute significantly in country's economy and employment they have got a pull factor there are some issues and as the urban areas increasing there are some issues with the urban areas the lack of open space in adequacy of infrastructure mushrooming of slums as of now and as per the census of 2001 61.8 million population resides in urban, uh, slum area the lack of services drinking water sanitation and so and so forth the uh, issue is in the insufficient solid waste disposal poor environmental quality so as such urban areas for the proper their pl proper pl planning they require timely and updated geospatial information for better management and planning of available resources as per the census of 2001 and 2011 census under the four categories which i have defined in the previous slide out total 7935 towns are there as per 2011 and as per the 2001 census this data was 5161 towns and among these uh, towns statutory towns are 4041 as per 2011 and as per 2001 census it was 3799 similarly the census towns they are now 3894 as per 2001 census they are 1362 urban agglomerations they are now 475 as per 2001 census they were 384 outgrowths were 981 as per 2011 census they were 2953 uh, as per 2001 census now let us stay, have a look on classification of urban settlements basically there are three or uh, there are six categories of urban settlements and they are ranging from class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 5 and 6 now the class 1 towns are those towns having the population of more than 1 lakh in this category when you look at the as per the census of 2001 and 2011 census there is a rise of earlier the percentage of urban population as per 2001 census was 68.7% as per 2011 census now the percentage of urban population in the class 1 city is 72 70.2% similarly the percentage of urban population in other categories they are given in this slide now when you look at this data now we find though the india's population has grown 200 times two and a half times but urban india has grown nearly five times and as we have seen in the previous slide that in 2011 census that 377 million indians were living in 7935 towns and cities spread across the country now it is expected to increase to over 533 millions by 2021 now there is a need for planning and for the planning we need data so from where the data has to come from so remote sensing gis and several other technological interventions they provide the data and when you look at the remote sensing gis gps and other technologies together let us call it g special their applications are manifold in urban planning it may range from urban planning inclusive planning urban governance urban environment heritage conservation urban design urban utility urban hazard let us take some examples and applications under each field in the case of urban planning because the first and the foremost requirement is the base map now remote sensing with its synoptic view and also the varying spatial spectral resolution characteristics 
it provides good quality base maps these base maps when you add on the information they can add the value and we can go for the map updation we can go for the infrastructure mapping land use or various kind of plans at various scale we can look at the urban growth sprawl suitability analysis and also we can go with the based on other drivers when we ingest we can go for the urban growth model in the inclusive planning we can look into the volumetry analysis and mapping of informal settlements urban the under the urban governance there are several examples where municipal gis urban cadastral studies property taxation they have been experimented urban land, under the urban environment urban green spaces solid waste disposal management and site selection urban heat island urban pollution microclimate studies they are all have been experimented there are applications of close range photogrammetry and other high tech instrument in the heritage conservation and what we can do based on multi viewing technology and using these instruments we can generate the 3d model and these will 3d will model will help us to create the database and this database can also help in uh, several other areas in the urban design we can use the 3d city visualization and this database can also be helpful in the urban regeneration and redevelopment exercise urban equity is another area where the some of the recent government programs they have got the high level of thrust and they are the utility mapping transportation and other areas urban hazard is one area where the geospatial applications have got a high role and some of these are it may be the micro seismic studies urban fire urban flood and so and so forth we'll be looking at some of these applications in the subsequent slides in the all these applications we have got a variety of solutions let us look at the solutions we can have the data from remote sensing and these data from the variety of sensors which are in space it may be from higher to lower resol resolution from the photogrammetry point of view we have got the data from the aerial digital all using the close range photogrammetry then also we have got the data from the free terrestrial laser scanner lidar based and to for the data analyzing the data we have got a technique called geographic information system we have got also we can also collect the data using global positioning system which helps us to because the higher resolution satellite data needs gcps of higher order so in that sense we require georeferencing using global positioning system this gps or the mobile mapping mapping unit can also help us in asset mapping we got also recent times that new te newer technology which is coming up is uav this uav helps us to map the urban area for the utility mapping you might have seen somewhere on the road also the applications of ground penetrating radar for understanding the underground water utilities now let us go further and understand the technology first in the terms of when you look at the remote sensing technology as such then in the terms of remote sensing we got variety of resolutions you this are which i believe in, uh, by this time you understand it but four terms are there spatial resolution spectral resolution temporal resolution and radiometric resolution Red, spatial resolution it's most high hot got a higher uh, relevance in terms of urban planning because normally cities they require mapping at higher scale but question is there are some inherent characteristics which one has to understand before selecting the satellite data because we should understand that what kind of data interpretation or class action technique we're going to employ because there has to be a minimum four pixels within an object to identify their role of various image interpretation interpretation techniques when you are deploying the image interpretation uh, based visual interpretation methods there are other issues that is the land use versus land cover there are also the significance of spectral resolution 
because we have to differentiate between the urban and non urban and also within the urban several urban areas which may have variety of rooftop or other uh, characteristics now in that sense one can use multi spectral data and the come technology which is which has to come up that is the hyperspectral data as of now from the foreign data sources hyperspectral data is available to some extent and in india isro is trying to launch its own hyperspectral database remote sensing satellite now we have got temporal resolution which has got high rele uh, relevance in urban planning because we have to understand the land use transformation because the, when the cities are growing after all it requires land and the land comes from the surroundings or within, within it this land use transformation one can readily understand using the remote sensing data and this can help us to understand the urban sprawl growth and also for the urban growth prospective urban growth modeling temp radiometric resolution has also got some uh, 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 relevance in ur uh, urban mapping because it helps us to differentiate between the features now when we talk about the spatial resolution we have got three categories they and three categories are high spatial resolution where the resolution is 0.6 meter to 4 meter and got variety of satellites which offered the uh, data of this range we got medium spatial resolution that is 4 meter to 30 meter again we have got the number of satellites and the low spatial resolution 30 meter to 1 km let us take a quick look of some of the satellites this list is not exhaustive you can visit other data uh, sources where you can understand various other satellites which are offering for example we have got iconos cartos has 2 or 2b quick bird world we when world we two or joi and one and so and so forth you see the launch date pixel size swath that is the width of the each frame quantization that is the radiometric uh, characteristics and whether the stereo acquisition that means seeing the area from two different angles whether this facility is available or not so let us take one example for example the iconos with, uh, which was launched in 1999 and has got a panchromatic band of 1 meter multispectral band of 4 meter swath of 11 km quantization and stereo acquisition it has got a stereo acquisition capability then we have got indian remote sensing satellite series we have got the cartosat 2 and 2b which is launched in year 2007 and 2010 with the pixel size of 0.8 meter with a swath of 9.6 km 10 bit quantization and with stereo capability in one of the satellite this just shows this slide just shows the various uh, satellites sensors number of bands spatial resolution and the data is available from the period to it is available now this list again is not so exhaustive because looking at the data frame which is available to me but you can kindly visit the other uh, resources now when this data set is available what is their use let us dwell on this issue so there the issue is the kind of data selection versus the planning level so that in the terms of planning generally we talk about regional perspective level meso level or micro level so in the macro level we have, why should we use the high resolution satellite data because the mapping scale is in general 50000 or higher where the in that sense a data of 80 to 360 meter is sufficient when go over with the meso level with the medium resolution satellite data something like 4 meter 30 meter at a scale of 10 to 50000 that will do good in the micro level planning higher resolution satellite data is required because we have to prepare the project micro watershed level or the village level or the zone plans so there we required the mapping scale of 1 is to 1000 to 5000 now look at some of the application for example uh, in the case of urban planning when we talk about the perspective plan where the urban land is at level 1 maybe level 2 also we can generate but when we go to the meso level then we have to go to level 2 of land use land cover for example 
and when you go to the micro level there we can go to level 4 that means your information can your scale is increasing your polygon size uh, is relatively larger and then also the information content has increased right but only point here that uh, we have to choose what are you looking for in terms of other characteristics also we can uh, whether it is infrastructure planning disaster rural development planning we can choose it now Again, the question is whether it is a perspective plan, regional plan, development plan, or local area plan. Again, it also drives to a point that what should be the time frame. That means at what interval should it be done. So, this is the data which has been taken from the URD PFI guidelines. You can refer to the URD PFI guidelines. And then again, the periodicity has been defined. Now, when you look at the total from the perspective plan to the local area plan, one can devise from the perspective plan, we can go higher, we can generate the regional plan and the development plan. From the development plan, one can generate the local area plan or the special area plan. So, this way, from the regional to the urban to the micro level, the planning is perceived. Now, question is, because the data generation, data collection is one of the important issues and large amount of energy is invested in data collection. So, in that sense, there are several data sources are available and these data sets are also used for several planning uh, realization. For example, Department of Space in uh, coordination with Ministry of Urban Development, the program we have contributed and the program is National Urban Information System where large scale urban geospatial database for various levels of urban planning, infrastructure development and e-governance has been, the scope has been given. There we have generated 12 primary layers and 4 incorporated layers in partnership with various other agencies. And as of now for 152 towns, this database is available to the common citizen for visualization. And for the specific users, I mean for the uh, user at state government levels, this data has got the higher privilege. Now, this, when you see, look this at light, and this data is, uh, I mean it is available for 152 towns spread across, as I told in the beginning, for the sixth category of urban settlements. Now, the data, as I told, that we have got the variety of data sources. And in the ISRO's Bhuvan web, uh, web, uh, web portal, we have got as of now more than, more than 300 cities, the database at 1 meter resolution is available. And this shows, this slide shows some of the examples and this data is from the Bhuvan. Kindly visit Bhuvan for visualization of data for the urban other Indian cities. And this is the data for other part of the Delhi. Now, once you have got the data, the point here, how the information content increases with the skill of the interpreter. Let us take some example. When you talk about the urban areas, when you go for the perspective planning, so it will be close to 1 is to 50,000 level. Here, the built up land will constitute only one polygon. When you go for the development planning, where the scale would be close to something like 12.5,000 or 10,000, whatever. So here, now the built up land will be further categorized as residential, industrial, commercial, recreational, so and so forth. When you go to the third level in the zonal planning, the same residential area will be categorized as high rise, medium rise, low rise, clubs, seasonal and others. When you go to the specific uh, project scheme with zonal pl plans and so and so forth, then the high rise further it will be defined as whether it is a, what it is apartments or flats. It may be row houses or tenements. So this way the information content increases. Other details are given in the subsequent slides. Now let us look uh, having understood the technology, data sets available and I believe now you will also understand the interpretation methods. Now what are various applications? I'll, I'll demonstrate some of the applications in the urban and regional planning subsequently. One uh, important or at the beginning because in urban areas, the 2D and the 3D has both have got the relevance. 
Why? Because we want to understand the space use. Because space are limited. That means land area is limited. So we have to optimally utilize it. Now remote sensing has got the benefit. Either uh, using the automated method or the manual methods, one can understand the 3D geometry of the buildings. Based on 3D geometry of the buildings, one can find out the build and also the 2D mapping. This together helps us to understand the space use. Now, high resolution satellite data, and when you look at the example here, this shows the building footprints. And now, when you look at in the 3D perspective, it helps us to understand the floor area ratio or the floor space index, how you call it. It's nothing but it's the FAR is total built up area of, upon the total area of the plots. So once you do it, you are able to find out what is the space use. Another example is the population estimation. Though the population estimation, uh, I mean enumeration is the primary technique. But as of now, the population estima estimation to some extent, it is also being used by the people engaged in population en enumeration. And the one of the popular method is dwelling unit technique. What it does, not, nothing but understanding the uh, number of uh, families and also the, the size of each dwelling unit. And it is assumed that each dwelling unit is occupied. No, there are some limitations are there, but even then, some sample area, more than 90% accuracy we have found out. Now, the one very important application of satellite remote sensing is understanding the sprawl. Sprawl is nothing but how the cities are growing. Now, this growth will be within the city and also the outside the city. Now, look at one example. This example is for the Dehradun city. You see that Dehradun, uh, uh, within the Dun Valley, in the year 1987, 1992, 1998, 2000 and beyond, it is growing in uh, varying directions, in omni direction. And then we are trying to find out, based on the sprawl, which direction city has grown. For example, till 2003, the growth was primarily, the growth was primarily in the southern direction. Once the land got exhausted, now the subsequently the growth is happening in the other direction. So one can find out the growth, that means what is the current extent of the city area. One can find out a direction and also one can find out what is the pattern of growth. So this sprawl has got very high relevance. Now, once you have understood the sprawl, now because the, when the sprawl is happening, the, the uh, city, I mean urban area is going to consume the land. And this land will be the adjoining land which is taken from the adjoining or within the city. Now, this growth will be, that can be understood using the satellite remote sensing data. Now, this is the study which has been done for the Lucknow area. We are trying to find out what is the area of the city over a very area. Now, we can also do the growth modeling and then try to find out, assess when the city is growing, what is the area of the city versus the population growth. And you can understand the land use transformation. That means from which to which category the land use has got changed. For example, the cultural to built up area, how much, what is the percentage? And as a geographical area, how much change has occurred? From the plantation to wetlands and several other categories, how the land use transformation for urban areas is happening. Now, when the urban area is, because the urban growth, it seems, looks inevitable. That means, there are people who are in, the influx to the city has to happen. Now, in that sense, we have to find out where is the scope, scope for growth within the city. That is the subject of urban expansion, suitability and valuation. That means, we have to find out, based on characteristics of the land and other uh, characteristics, whether it is good for urban or not good for urban. Now, what one has to do, one has to generate various layers. And these layers will be land, existing land use land cover, connectivity or approachability, slope, geomorphology, hydrogeomorphology. And then one can use various methods. Based, it may be methods will be based on arithmetic uh, simple uh, linear combination of several layers or based on some subjectivity analysis and giving some weightage. 
and this is the domain of GIS and some GIS based technique one can use and go for the urban suitability analysis evaluation. And this shows one example for the Jammu city where urban suitability analysis has been carried out. Now that the city is, is growing, there is always pressure on the services. Now uh, when the pressure is there and also in the context of the smart cities, now the people are talking about how to make the services better or in the context of the Amrit program. So one can generate various kind of information system. This slide shows one, the, one of the information system for the urban areas where the electricity is available, what is the percentage of the built area, what kind of land use in practice within the urban area. So this way several kind of information system can be generated. Now in terms of services of the water is the foremost because uh, several guidelines have been given for the per capita water availability. For example, CPH EO states that, that the per capita water availability in city area where the sewer system is not there should be 70 LPCD. And where the sewer system is available, it should be 135 LPCD. So this way, one can find out the based on population enumeration for different wards, one can find out what is the demand. Once we have computed a demand, now we have to compute or equate it with the supply. Now for that reason, several methods are available and the recent times, geospatial technology can also help us in mapping the water distribution facility and also head gradient being created and whether this head of gradient created is able to supply the water to the beneficiary who is located at the tail end. Now this is the one example what we have tried when we assessed for a particular city uh, we have found the total requirement of the city wa was 102 million liters per day and the supply as a whole is 80.28 million liters per day. Now this is a demand supply gap is 22.22 million liters per day. So this way as a whole or for the special basis we can find out what is the grow, uh, supply and demand assessment. Now as I told in the beginning of the slide we have got the remote sensing data also available variety of spectral bands. And the thermal data is particularly helpful in understanding the urban heat islands. Because when you look at this particular uh, frame of the satellite, uh, slide, you see how the temperature, land surface temperature is varying in respect to the varying land use. So with the rural landscape, with the commercial to the residential and suburban. In general, whenever the concrete surfaces, they appear or they are um, uh, in dominance, there the temperature is higher as compared to the non-concrete other non-urban surfaces. Now the thermal band, whether it is a single band available in the satellite data, mono window technique or the two bands available that is the split window technique, one can understand what is the temperature pattern in the land surface temperature pattern within the city, within the ward area or various kind of land uses. Now this another uh, applications as I told in the beginning of the slide that is the hyperspectral remote sensing because you see that the uh, because based on variety of rooftop types based on the age of the building based on the various land use land cover we suppose you want to differentiate between the various building material it may be brick it may be the concrete roof based on the road surface or the bare soil or sand. This way we can differentiate based on the satellite data. But only point here, the data which is available as of now that is a Hyperion in the archive mode, but the spatial resolution is coarser. The, but we understand and that near, uh, near, uh, in, uh, in near coming up time, we are going to have the satellite data which are good in a high, I mean, which are uh, have got the high perspective as well as the higher spatial resolution characteristics. Now, in terms of urban transport, 
the, we have to also understand what, whether the uh, transport capacity as of now, because when the urban population is increasing, we have to also understand the, tra the urban transport carrying capacity. In that sense, there are some junctions we have to study. For example, in this particular slide, we are trying to assess for a particular Y junction in the city, whether uh, what is the person, uh, I mean, uh, car uh, which is uh, which moving on the road, and also is there any blind corners or the what is the alternate available? No, the 3D modeling has got the very high importance in the urban and regional planning. Now, this in this particular uh, slide, we have experimented with Cartosat 1 stereo data, and using the stereo perspective model, we have trying to assess. We are trying to assess the what is the height of the building, and using this method, we have found out that the on an average for the various buildings, for various heights of the buildings, we have for, and for various various density of the building, on an average, we have found out that 1.9 meter as compared to the manual methods have been noticed. Now, because some limitations are there in that sense, we can also use the lidar based technique for estimating the building heights. There, the accuracy will certainly improve, and we have observed the accuracy to the range of 0.2 to 1 meter. But only point here, the availability of airborne lidar data is scarce because the flood is another problem within the urban areas, and you might have noticed in the newspapers recently. Now, the, whether the remote sensing, GIS, and the geospatial technique as such, and the field data. Can it help us in understanding or zonation of urban areas in terms of flood hazard? Yes, there are some models and methods which which require remote sensing data and which are uh, 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 use the hydrological models for uh, doing the zonation of the uh, based on urban floods. And this in this slide, particularly we are looking at in the first, for example, one has to compute. What is the total quantum of uh, runoff which is available? At what intensity? That means the intensity duration uh, IDF curve and for various regions and based on one can compute what is the peak discharge at various frequency interval. For example, for the given urban area, one can compute for the uh, based on meter cube per second, that is the QMIP, what is the discharge available? And you see, the frequency and the quantum when uh, and the and the quantum of discharge is increasing based on the period study. For example, at five year interval, the highest discharge, the peak discharge, is computed as 123 meter cube per second. For the at 100 years interval, for the same given area, for the same stream, the discharge is computed to 38 meter cube per second. For sure, when the quantum of discharge is increasing. And if the suppose the carrying capacity of the river is insufficient, the water will flow on the surroundings and the surrounding area will get inundated. Now, this computation can be done using remote sensing with some input from remote sensing data. And once we overlay the expanse of this flood water on the land use land cover map, we can compute the area which are getting affected with the urban flood. Now, with this, uh, I, I, I have thrown some light on the urban applications. Now let us dwell on the regional, because the regions are nothing but a portion of our surface having homogeneous physical conditions. It may consist of some few villages or a number of countries. The region has got very high relevance. It may be a cultural region, resource region, city region or the planning region. It is not necessarily used with the urban context. Now, the region has got some characteristics. It may be area, boundaries, image, change. That means it contains some area, it is separated by boundaries from surrounding regions, and it has got some image that you are, you are entering. For example, you are entering into the national capital region. And there, as it is happening over the urban area, and there is a change also occur in the uh, uh, region also. Now, any region has got three uh, regional characteristics. One is the core. For example, within the national capital region, the NCT is in the core. Within the, in the periphery, we have got peripheral region. 
in terms of resources in terms of uh, other characteristics generally the core region is affluent and the peripheral regions they there the services are slightly inferior and within the region we have got one more uh, characters that is called the malnutrition region where the which is in dependent on for example some industry suppose the industry has gone not in operation now the uh, revenue or the economic resources are in crunch so there will be some decline now regional planning has got some relevance because when you talk about the urban because our urban when you uh, uh, urban areas are not developed in isolation we have to also look at the regional planning because uh, these together they have got some sense of regionalism as well as element of cohesion so in terms of regional planning we have got three levels macro meso micro so macro level means it is very coarse and national or some national level meso level means state intra state or region micro means district block or watershed level let us look at some characteristics of the examples of the regional plan there will be hill region desert area region river valley resources region western ghat region watershed region in plan let us take some example for example india is divided into various agro climatic zonation based on combined characteristics of biological eco uh, and then ecological and several other characteristics it is divided into several regions in terms of uh, climate also world is divided into six climatic regions now when you look at the regional planning we require data now this data will be resource data that means what is the land use what is the soil water mineral sources so and so forth we also require geographic data agro economic data socio economic data or the infrastructure data or uh, then this data we require for what is required to understand the present state of work development projected needs of the plan period and if it, there is any gap so once you have understood then what are the inputs from the remote sensing gis use as we all know using the remote sensing gis we can generate land use land cover forest map soil map because region is a multidisciplinary aspect so we require multidisciplinary maps topographical maps hydrogeomorphology cultural water potential drainage wastelands and so and so forth now again the issue is because this regional plan is a data intensive are there any sources we can generate uh, we can collect the data yes indian space research organization has launched a program in uh, coordination with the central government and the program name is space based information support for decentralized planning this program is particularly aimed towards planning or uh, uh, planning at panchayat level but at the same time this data can be used for regional planning primarily this a uh, csdp project has generated data on seamless mosaic of 2.5 meter resolution satellite data for entire country we are also getting into the uh, assets mapping at uh, at 340 levels and then finally the program is aimed for planning at uh, panchayat level that means outright outreach that means pris and citizen uh, approaches also required so as i told total 340 uh, assets assets will be natural resources productive civic human resources governance assets total 340 kind of assets are being generated now you may understand this is a very exhaustive exercise this cannot be done in isolation so it's a uh, program which is ongoing across the country in partnership with various state remote sensing application center and other centers of uh, in the country now when you look at this program this uh, we have got uh, this uh, bhuvan portal which has got similar hydrogen satellite data and various other kind of data which is also helpful in the regional planning so this shows the portal for the bhuvan panchayat where the outputs from the csdp project is going to reside and disseminate to the common citizen we got other data so for regional planning and this data will be from the bhuvan or other web portals which are uh, offered by the indian space research organization or other institutions 
Now let us take a, some look, quick look on some examples of regional planning. Now this shows regional planning at watershed level. Now the scope defined within this project is to have a data generation, integration and for the planning of land and water resources. Here in this case, this is the Indian Remote Sensing false color composite. Using this data and also the topographical maps and other data, the watershed boundary and the sub-watershed boundary and nomenclature have been defined. The slope map for various slope categories have been uh, defined. Land use map has been generated and then soil map and the hydrogeomorphological maps have also been generated. When this information has been generated, now we get into two things. First is the land resources development plan and the water resources development plan. Now the important point here, the through the data integration technique, that means the data which we have generated in the, as we have seen in the previous slide, they are all integrated in the GIS domain and the la land use becomes the, uh, 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 the base polygon. So with the land use as the base polygon, for example, let us take some category, the forest blank within the forest area, agricultural within the crop and the agricultural area, agricultural area without trees, for the given slope, altitude, geomorphology, and the, some recommendation. And this recommendation is to enhance the vegetation characteristics, to improve the agricultural practices, to uh, minimize the, the wasteland, or to better utilize other resources, they are all given here in this particular slide. Similarly, for the water resources also to, to enhance the utilization of, to optimally utilize the water resources, whether it is a subsurface water or it is a ground water, they have been worked out. Now this for example, in the surface water resources, check dams, spring storage tanks, rooftop rainwater harvesting, so and so forth, they have been worked out. Now again you can have variety of decision rules, for example, let us take check dam. So check dams in uh, areas will be required because after all, whenever the check dams are there, some inundation will be there. And also you have to look at the, the slope of the river, you have to look at the stream characteristic, you have to look at joining land use land cover, you have to look at the uh, geological characteristics, geological structure characteristics. Once you integrate it, form your decision rule, you can find out that where the check dams will be feasible. Similarly, other action items it require some decision rules. Yeah, let us take some examples of the regional planning in urban context. One example I'll particularly mention here that is the national capital region planning. Now you are all, as we all know, as you move, for example, to NCR Delhi, you see as you are close to cities like Mujaffarnagar, Meerut, or beyond, or the Ghaziabad, similarly, the surrounding cities in the Haryana or other states, you see, before you have reached to the Delhi, you, see, and, uh, you experience the hustle and bustle of the city. And that is the kind of feeling you get, that is the regional planning. And in that context, you see, the NCR planning, now it constitutes more than 22 cities and recently in the month of June, three city uh, districts have been included, including Muzaffarnagar, Zind and Karnal. And within the NCR planning, we have got the metro centers, regional centers and also the counter magnet areas. Because the employment opportunity, they are relatively high in metro cities and there is a reason for that influx. And when you uh, take the regional planning in right context, and as we have seen, the base on the once the urban planning came into being, there are urban uh, population within the uh, NCR Delhi, NCT Delhi, they are slightly lesser and their pressure on the Delhi is slightly de decreased before the NCR planning has been taken in the process. Now, I'll conclude my presentation here with a term called smart city because urban planning as on today because we have reached to a stage where there is a high pressure on the city. So in that context, the city has to be grow in a smart fashion and such a, uh, in this smart city, it encompasses so that people have got the smart economy, smart mobility, smart environment, smart living, smart governing to have a better tomorrow, a livable tomorrow. 
So smart city is nothing but when you go uh, expand the acronym and this we uh, understand S stands for sustainable solutions, M for management of resources efficiently, A for active citizen participation, R for research and development, transport, T for transport efficiency, C for communication network, I for infrastructure development, T for technological advancement, Y for yielding better quality of life. And geospatial technology again has got a very good role in smart city planning because we require information, we require data. So geospatial technologies as such, they've got a higher role where we can generate variety of GIS based maps. We can go to the periodical monitoring, sprawl, growth and several things as we have learned this uh, in the in, in deliberation today. Thank you very much.